Nasty. The loaf and the knife. Warning. This is a horror story. First thing Mrs. Kent does is sit down at my table, take her bag onto her lap, and out of the bag she takes half a loaf of bread. Next, she takes a little penknife. Now, this little penknife had two rusty blades, one either end. Yeah? The one she sticks in the open end of the loaf where it's sawn off, and the other she just opens it out, blade up. Next thing, she takes up the loaf with the knife stuck in it and she starts off round the room as if she's looking for one of these mice. In the end, she comes to a hole between the boards and the skirting and straightway she's laying down the loaf a little way back from the hole with the blade of the knife sticking out. Next thing, she takes my chair and sets it down a little way back from the loaf and knife and then... She switched out the light and she went and sat on the chair. Only the lights from the street shone in and there she sat, staring at the loaf and knife and beyond it the wall. And there was me, peering through the keyhole, not daring to breathe. She sat there, staring at that hole for what seemed like a lifetime until, all of a sudden, there was a little sound. Scrape, scrape, out of the hole came a mouse. It came, slow, careful, sniffing up the blade of the knife. Mrs Kent sat there with the street light shining in, her eyes fixed. Not a hair on her head moving. And there was me at the keyhole, staring. The mouse stopped at the blade, sniffed again, and then... Back it ran to the hole, and still she sat, and still she stared. Until, all of a sudden, eh, there was another little sound. Out of the hole came a mouse. Maybe it was the same one. Maybe it was the next door neighbour. I shall never know. I couldn't see clear enough anyhow. Anyways, this time, it come in, careful, sniffing its way up to the blade. And when it got to the blade, it ran its whiskers along the length of the blade. It stopped for a moment, and then in a flash, it's back down the hole. Still she sat, still she stared. And there I was, still outside the door, scarcely daring to breathe. My eye stuck to that keyhole. Then, all of a sudden, for a third, third time, comes a mouse. Maybe the same mouse, maybe a third, maybe the one she was really after, but this time it was different. This time it came as if its back legs were holding it back. They were fighting to stay put, but its front legs were pulling, pulling it on. There was a real struggle going on inside that mouse. And the whole time it was making this mouse noise. The nip, 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 nip. You hear under your floorboards at night. So this mouse coming faster than it was going, digging its back legs in with its front legs pulling, got to the blade. And this... You'll never believe it put its head over the blade and in one stroke it ran its neck along the length of the blade and slit its little throat until it moved no more. The blood ran from out of its neck and its body lay still on the floor. At that, old Mrs Kent, she got up, she took a cloth and paper bag out of her bag. She picked up the mouse by its tail, put it in the paper bag. She put the paper bag back into her bag. She mopped the blood off the floor, wiped her knife clean, put the cloth in her bag, pulled the knife out of the loaf, snapped the blade shut, put the knife in the bag and put the loaf in the bag. And the whole time it went on, I was still watching. I just couldn't tear myself away from that keyhole. 
She got up, turned and came towards the door. And still, I couldn't tear myself away. She opens the door and there I am, still on my knees. Don't say I never told you, she said. I warned you. What you've just seen will live in your head till your dying day. It will torment you for the rest of your life or till you find a way of ridding yourself of it. Had that, the woman, the Bakerloo flea woman, turned on me sitting there upstairs on the last bus home with a funny look in her eye. And I am. I just have, she said. I feel easy in myself for the first time since I've seen the whole business with the loaf and knife because, because I've just told you all that happened. She pointed again right at me and laughed. Her face relaxed. She looked out of the window of the bus. Oh, yeah. 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 Good Lord, she says. Look, this is my stop. She slipped away off the bus, taking a quick last look at me. Now it will live with you for the rest of your life and torment you like it did me till you find a way to get rid of it. And that was that. She left me there. Was a, I was four or five stops past my stop on the last bus and I had to walk back over a mile through the dark streets thinking about what she said. It will live with you like it did me till you find a way to get rid of it. And I found myself thinking, yeah, but how? How can I get rid of it? Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to subscribe to this channel where you can click on subscribe. If you want to like something, just click on like. Uh, and you can leave a comment as well. That's always nice. And don't forget my website, Michael Rosen, or one word, michaelrosen.co.uk.